Hello again, and it's Andrew from Red Circle Pottery. Uh, this video is going to be about a 10-pound bowl that I recently made. Uh, I haven't made some mixing bowls or some bigger bowls in quite a while, so I thought this would be a fun one to uh, get back into and then also share with you a little bit about my process and my thinking and uh, some of the, the details. Because throwing larger forms, there's definitely some changes. If you're throwing pottery, um, you know, throwing a couple pounds or making mugs and, you know, the lighter weights of clay are quite a bit different than how you have to treat larger forms and also the amount of clay that you're working with. It's a, really a lot different. So I just want to share what some of those differences are uh, in my mind and may, hopefully that'll help you if you're thinking about trying something like this or just interested in the process. Um, so there's something to be said for working with large amounts of clay. This one's 10 pounds. And the first thing to kind of detail here is that the 10 pounds that I'm working with is incredibly soft. So I have a pug mill. Uh, I ran this through with some really kind of liquid clay so I could soften it up. Uh, so there's a really big issue when uh, you're wedging your clay and you have some harder spots or some knots that kind of end up in your clay. So anytime there's a difference between soft spots and hard spots, those do not turn the same way on the wheel they move at different speeds uh, once you start to hit them and so that will throw wobbles into your pots as that you know sort of that um, you know the, the elasticity or the play comes out in a harder spot versus a softer spot so I wanted to make sure that the clay was really soft and it makes it really easy to work with. Now, once you do that, that introduces some new challenges, which are the clay is extremely like soft and plastic and isn't really rigid. So when you're working with a larger form, such as a 10 pound bowl or a vase, you have to be aware that the, the strength isn't gonna be quite the same if the clay was drier and stiffer. So that's something to keep in mind. And so you have to kind of account for that in different parts of your form uh, when you're going to throw. And what I mean by that is uh, a little bit later on here in the video, when I start to go upwards, that's what I'm spending a lot of time doing. I'm taking the, the pot and I'm really making it vertical before I start to bring it outwards and sort of have it flare out into that, you know, that profile of a bowl. And the reason I'm doing that is that the, the weakest part of the pot or the pot, pot, the part of the pot that's doing the most work is the bottom third. You know, it has to hold up. It's kind of like a skyscraper, right? Where uh, it has to hold up the entire weight of the entire body. And so uh, that bottom third has to be a little bit thicker. And it's usually the last part of the form that I'm really working with. Because if I, if I thin it out too much and it can't support the upper part of the bowl, then what it's going to do is just fall and collapse. The other thing I need to keep in mind too is the speed at which I'm throwing. So the larger the bowl gets, the slower I have to make the wheel go. So there's a lot of centrifugal forces at work. And of course, the bigger the bowl gets, the farther out from the center, uh, the top and the edges become. And so there's there's just more and more forces at work. So there's a lot of physics involved there where if it's going too fast, it'll actually just throw the bowl open. And you don't want that because if it flares open too much, it'll just fall and collapse. So uh bigger the piece, the more that becomes an issue. You don't notice it when you're working so close to the center, when you're working at a pound, two pounds, three pounds and smaller bowls. But, um, you know, again, the greater the weight, the more you'll start to notice that. And those, those are kind of things you're going to learn the hard way where, you know, you go and throw a five pound bowl and suddenly there's a bunch of forces at work that you weren't normally used to. And so, uh, you'll collapse a pot or something will happen that, you know, like I said, learn the hard way on that one. But uh, at least if you go into it kind of being aware that uh, these things are going to happen, then you can usually plan for them. And, um, and again, that affects how you throw. So focusing on, uh, for me, the, the top two thirds of the bowl is a lot of what I want to finish before then I go back and work on the bottom part of the bowl and actually like profiling and giving it shape. So, and that's what we're starting to get into here is, um, you know, again, trying to make this bowl fairly vertical. Uh, and this is true for any kind of pot. You really want to, you know, make it vertical, get most of the clay thickness where you need it to be. Now, of course, because the, the top flares out and becomes wider, you know, it uses up a lot of that clay. So you, use, you have to account for leaving some thickness towards the top too, depending on your form. So uh, again, true for bowls. Uh, but either way, you know, I'm just going to kind of take my time, uh, think of my fingers like a record player. I want to pretty much be touching all of the clay on every pass. 
and making sure that I'm, you know, adjusting the thickness of the clay where I want it to be and, and getting the most out of it. So I have a pretty even thickness overall in the bowl and then uh, just slowly but surely working on the profile and getting it to where I want. Uh, one thing I missed towards the beginning to point out is that uh, also I'm leaving a pretty good amount of clay on the bottom because I'm going to trim a foot on this pot. So it's really important that you do some compression, especially on larger pieces. You know, there's going to be some drying out that's going to have to occur. So typically you're going to dry a bowl like this a lot slower uh, because you don't want cracking to occur. That's, you know, nine times out of 10, if you're going to get any cracking, it's going to be in the very, very foot of the, of the pot. So when you trim away some of that clay, it's going to still be a bit wetter than the rest of the bowl. So you can get some S cracking or something similar. Why it forms a, an S, I'm not exactly sure. I'm sure there's some kind of uh, science behind that, but you'll end up with an S crack and usually the very bottom of the pot. So um, I want to do a lot of compression to avoid that. This is stoneware. Stoneware doesn't typically have an issue with S cracks. Porcelain is pretty notorious for having S cracks. So uh, anything that's a more porcelain type of clay, you're going to want to account for that and uh, make sure you're doing a really good job compressing the bottom and accounting for um, making sure that that clay is, is stiffened up through that compression. So. And it's starting to look more and more like a bowl. And you know, now I'm gonna start getting a little bit into the profile and I'm gonna start flaring out the bottom a little bit, just kind of moving it over slowly but surely without compromising the upper parts of the pot. Again, I still want it to hold it. Um, but I have to start getting into a little bit of the profile and bringing it more and more out. So you'll see me wet it quite a bit. So there's another thing that's happening here and that surface area. So what happens is you're pulling in all the walls and you're making you know the overall pot bigger it also dries out the surface of the clay you think about like suddenly you had a, enough water to cover the surface area of the pot when it was smaller but now suddenly you stretch that out and there's less water covering or less slip covering the entire pot so friction starts to become an issue too and i i think that happens a couple times in this pot where you know i'm pulling upwards and then suddenly i hit this spot of friction because now that pot's more dried out or there's less slip covering it so i don't have quite the same amount of lubrication so i'm frequently having to go and like making sure that i'm uh, sponging the entire surface area from the outside and the inside so I don't end up with that friction because the friction also like those hard spots will force you to kind of like pull your walls a little bit thicker or thinner than the rest of the pot so it messes with the uniformity of, of throwing. So it's just a, a lot of work of kind of taking your time making sure I'm going over the entire pot making sure it's lubricated with slip that just makes uh, it easier and again these are problems that start to come out when you're throwing larger forms it's just much greater surface area you know throwing one two three pounds you don't notice as much but you will with 10 15 20 pounds. And I've moved on to using a bowl rib. So this one's pretty much a, an arced. It's a, a 90 degree arc on this one. And, um, you know, you can use any kind of rib. Really all you're after is just some sort of smoothing out of the profile. Uh, you can't see it too well in this part of the video, but uh, I'm really working on the bottom. There's a little bit of a hump that happens because of the compression from the bottom and then also there's a bit of a hump because it's a little bit thicker in that spot so i'm really just trying to smooth that out with my hand on the outside and then using that rib to smooth that out on the inside and then just giving it a nice overall profile i want a really good bowl shape on this and the other thing you can do is there's there's no right or wrong way to to do any of this um, a lot of times what I'll also do is, you know, these bigger forms, I'll use a torch on them. 
So I'll do some initial shaping and profiling. And then when I was talking earlier about I need it to be stronger and stiffer to hold the weight of the pot, you can get more profile out of it by actually drying the pot a little bit. So if I hit it with a torch or if I let it sit for a couple hours and then come back to it, that's a really important technique to learn is knowing that you can walk away and come back. It's a little bit, you know, it's had a chance to dry out a little bit or lose a little moisture and then that will give it some strength and then you can do a little bit more profiling where if it was a softer, you wouldn't be able to normally do that. So uh, you'll see potters frequently use you know, torches or, you know, letting them sit so they can stiffen up a little bit and lose some of that water content. And that, that makes a really big difference in uh, giving it strength. Certainly, if you've ever seen a moon pot where they make a, you know, big sphere, uh, there's almost no way of doing that without compression of the clay and drying it out as they go so they can give it strength and then ultimately uh, finish the pot. So, uh, so yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, here's a, just a quick little view of the overall pot once it's uh, finished. Um, I can go back and I can give us a little bit more profile once I let it dry and uh, I'll have a nice uh, nice big bowl. I'm going to do some piercing with this and uh, uh, hopefully have a nice uh, centerpiece that somebody could put out and use. So I uh, hope you guys enjoyed and then until next time, thanks for watching.